Xi Jinping says that China is a haven for people with disabilities. I guess you'd have to be missing a brain to believe in communism. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party wants you to believe that Chinese leader Xi Jinping is a champion for the disabled. Xi said disabled people are equal members of a global family. And he's gone out of his way to meet with disabled citizens for good photo ops. Because surely he cares about the disabled and appreciates their contributions to society. And this isn't just a PR stunt to prove he can be photographed and isn't a blood-sucking vampire. I still have my doubts. Chinese state-run media and officials would have you believe that China has made considerable progress in protecting and promoting the rights of the disabled since she came to office. They love citing statistics like how over 90 laws in China are directly linked to protecting the rights and interests of persons with disabilities, and how China has established a social security system that includes living allowances and care subsidies for those with disabilities, which has benefited more than 27 million people. The CCP's propaganda about the disabled really ramped up last month, when more than 600 delegates representing 85 million disabled people gathered as the China Disabled Persons Federation opened its eighth national congress. Look at how happy all these disabled people are. It's not just the CCP that's promoting this idea. Even the UN's Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities commended China for its reforms. Ah, the UN, you can always count on it. He praises on China. It's almost as if it had been bought off with Chinese money. This could explain why the UN thought China, under the control of a genocidal authoritarian regime, would make a perfect member of the Human Rights Council. China being in charge of human rights is like a women's shelter run by Bill Cosby. Now, on paper, it sounds like China has all its ducks in a row when it comes to disabled people. But, like every Marvel movie since Endgame, reality often disappoints. Just because there are laws in China that call for higher quality of life and rights for the disabled, doesn't mean they're actually put into practice. In actuality, there are several hurdles that China's disabled people face. One of them is employment. Like I mentioned earlier, there are an estimated 85 million people in China who are disabled. According to the International Labor Organization, three-fourths of these live in rural areas, while the rest live in urban areas. But only a very small fraction of them find employment. China's own state council says that in 2020, official figures showed China had 8.6 million workers registered with disabilities. And that's not including the forced laborers that get maimed working in dangerous situations. Yep, China is definitely a great fit for the Human Rights Council. Now, it could just be that workers with disabilities aren't registering, but that's not great either. Part of the problem is that there's rampant discrimination against the disabled in China. Despite government mandates to employ the disabled, Chinese employers are choosing fines over meeting those quotas. But for those disabled people who are employed, there are other problems, especially if they work in a customer service job. Imagine to Karen telling a blind employee that they want to see the manager. Well, yeah, so do I. Disabled women, in particular, are very vulnerable. Those who are blind often end up working as masseuses. But blind women face abuse in China's massage parlors. The abuse doesn't end there. Like I said earlier, a majority of disabled people in China live in the rural regions. Thanks to gender imbalances resulting from the one-child policy, disabled women are at risk of being kidnapped for forced marriages. It's becoming disgustingly common to find ads for disabled women. Many of them are marked with prices, as you can see with these screenshots here. Now, the Chinese Communist Party at times addresses concerns about disabled employment and exploitation, but it's also complicit in the poor treatment of the disabled. I'll tell you how after the break. Welcome back. The CCP portrays itself as a champion for the disabled, but many people are questioning it, especially after it promoted an 11 and a half minute film called How Urgio Cured My Mental Friction After Being Back in the Village for Three Days. The film promotes an idea common in China, that disability is just a personal tragedy to overcome, not a societal problem. 
So many viewers thought this was the CCP's way of trying to absolve itself from having to do more to help the disabled since the film promotes the idea that the disabled can just tough it out and succeed on their own. Just pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, unless your disability is having no feet. Then pull yourself up with some other straps, unless you have no hands. The CCP does the bare minimum to help the disabled. But it's worse than that. The CCP has actually hurt them. China's zero COVID policies especially were horrible for the disabled. In lockdown cities like Wuhan, isolated seniors and disabled people have largely had to fend for themselves. This was fatal for some, such as the 16-year-old with cerebral palsy in Hubei province who starved to death days after relatives were quarantined. Even without COVID in the picture, the entire Chinese system doesn't work in favor of disabled people. According to the human rights magazine Bitter Winter, village chiefs and other local authorities operate on limited budgets and may try to hide the presence of disabled persons in their communities and avoid the expenses for their protection and rehabilitation. The CCP claims to be open to petitions to address complaints, but in practice, it's been notorious for stifling and even punishing petitioners. This includes the disabled. That's what happened to Jiang Jirlin, a Xinjiang-based disability rights activist who went under the nickname Nang Guo Lin Zi, 007. He ran into trouble with the authorities after he criticized the government for corruption in his area and problems in the drinking water supply. Jiang has been beaten and detained multiple times on suspicion of fabricating and deliberately spreading false and terrorist information. You know China's a great place to live when saying, hey, this water tastes funny, is considered an act of terrorism. That's an extremely broad and vague accusation, and that's the point. According to Jiang, a village vice secretary told him, even if you didn't do anything, we can still think of a label to assign to you. Even after being released, Jiang was put under house arrest and followed closely by police and village cadres multiple times. Radio Free Asia reported that Jiang Jirlin's mother confirmed that in order to prevent Jiang Jirlin from petitioning, the authorities even paid her to monitor her son. Because in China, snitches get riches. Jiang was even blocked more than once from seeking medical treatment before he was arrested on April 24, 2017 for extortion and blackmail. He's currently serving time in jail, though there's evidence that he's been mistreated after he lost significant weight and suffered a stroke. The CCP has a wonderful way of helping the disabled. It makes them even more disabled. Jiang isn't the only disabled person directly beaten for crossing authorities. Radio Free Asia reported in 2017 how disabled petitioner Sun Jun Chang had been detained in his home since 2012 with surveillance all around his house. According to him, the Qingdao Municipal Government Public Security Bureau persecuted him nonstop, smashing doors and windows in his home, blaring police car lights and sirens, and throwing garbage at his home. Real mature. Are they working in public security or committing an aggressive Halloween prank? Yet another disabled petitioner, Zhao Lin Chun, protested against a hospital for trying to cover up a medical accident that left her with disabled legs. She has been detained since 2018, leaving her unable to seek a doctor or go out to Beijing to petition. Sometimes authorities rely on thugs to do their bidding. According to the Civil Rights and Livelihood Watch, disabled human rights activist Su Shi-Chin from Shandong province was abducted in Beijing in 2013 and somehow ended up detained by police for 10 days. Did I say somehow? I meant so predictable that even a blind masseuse the government's doing nothing to help could see this coming. In 2017, another disabled person, Chiu Xianshi, and his wife found themselves detained after they petitioned for work-related injury compensation after not receiving any for 23 years. More recently, according to the Forbidden News Network, disabled petitioner Jiang Zhihua was also detained after he protested in May this year. This is just a small snippet of examples to show just how the CCP might treat the disabled well in the spotlight to make itself look good but will turn on a dime if the disabled so much as question the authorities. And after the CCP deals with you, you're almost guaranteed to be disabled. Don't worry though, they're on the Human Rights Council. And if you want to learn about how China is helping its minorities, just like it helps its disabled, check out this video. And click that orange button to support the show on Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.